Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside the Cage. Dana White targeted an explosive video of UFC champion. Guess who's throwing their two cents into the ring about the Bellator PFL merger? None other than our favorite boxing champion, Jake Paul. Just when you thought the fight world couldn't get more interesting, PFL chairman Don Davis dropped the bomb that these two powerhouses are teaming up starting in 2024. And here, Jake Paul is gearing up to box Andre in August and again in December, is all pumped up about the future of MMA. According to Jake, the timing for this merger is like a knockout punch, perfectly on point. This is a great day for all PFL and Bellator fighters and MMA fans, Jake Paul wrote on X. The stronger we get, the more opportunities there are for everyone. However, Jake Paul isn't holding back. He just dropped a video with some extra spice. Not only is he all hyped up about the Bellator PFL merger, but he's also taking a tricky turn at the big shots over at UFC, especially the man in charge, Dana White. Massive news. The PFL has acquired Bellator, Paul said. This is insane news for the entire industry and makes PFL even more of a global powerhouse with a fight roster equal to that of the UFCs. And we have some challenges. Let's prove it. Their champions versus our champions. Let's make it happen while Jake Paul's chat hit the MMA community for a minute. During his discussion, he even squared off with Dana White a few times in public for a fair play inside the octagon. Now here's the scoop. Dana White is currently on a Thanksgiving break. Meanwhile, PFL is gearing up for their final U.S. showdown of the year on Black Friday in D.C. Six world title fights are on deck. Talk about a feast for fight fans. And Bellator just wrapped up their 301st event in Chicago. And get this, the Jake Paul saga continues. He's eyeing the PFL's new Super Fight division to make his MMA debut. Against who? Mystery opponent alert. Jason Jackson's nightmarish revelation. Hear the new Bellator welterweight champ Jason Jackson doing some serious reflection. You know that moment when you realize you're not just winning a title for yourself, but you're also representing your home country, Jamaica. Particularly, Jason Jackson took a moment to reflect on the profound significance of his victory, not just for himself, but for his homeland, Jamaica. For Jackson, the win serves as a powerful statement, converting skeptics into believers and showcasing that he has the prowess to claim a championship belt. Beyond personal triumph, he recognizes the broader impact, proudly acknowledging that he now holds a tangible symbol of success for his country. Moreover, his declaration reflects a deep-seated ambition and a commitment to ascending to the peak of his weight class globally. In essence, Jackson's words capture a moment of personal and national pride intertwined with a relentless pursuit of excellence in the world of mixed martial arts. Now, here's the twist. Betting lines had Amosov as the heavy favorite, making Jackson the ultimate spoiler. And you bet he didn't let that slide. In his post-fight scrum, he made sure to give those betting lines a piece of his mind. It felt good. On MMA Junkie and ESPN, they got him at what? Number one and number five. So where's that put me at number six? So that put me at no five if I just jumped him or number four or number one. All right, number one. I like that. I'll take that, Jackson said. However, Jason Jackson might be the new champ, but he's not lounging on a victory. Yep, you heard it right. Just like many other pro fighters, he's rocking the double life. Juggling the punches in the ring and the daily grind on weekdays, it's like being a champion in the cage is just one part of the hustle for Jackson. Not yet. It hasn't set in. Like I said, every man has a dream and everyone has a nightmare, Jackson said. He added, and I was his nightmare. Just a few minutes after snagging that title, Jason Jackson still had his head spinning, wondering if it was all real. I mean, who can blame the guy? Winning a championship is like stepping into a dream, and it takes a bit for it to sink in. PFL Bellator merger sparks UFC chaos. Don Davis just spilled the tea on the PFL's grand plan to grab a slice of the UFC's three-decade-long feast. After months of rumors swirling around, Davis finally put off the curtain from the fact the Professional Fighters League, PFL, is officially joining forces with Bellator MMA in a jaw-dropping deal that's set to shake up the fight world. And where did we get the juicy deets? Well, Don Davis swung by the MMA hour with Ariel Helwani right after the merger bombshell, and he dropped some gems. Also, he revealed the plans of these two powerhouse organizations, and of course, he didn't forget to throw a little shade at UFC's big boss, Dana White. 
Undoubtedly, it seems that White's ridiculing the idea of anyone wanting to buy Bellator didn't sit well with Davis, he stated during his conversation. Everybody knows Dana well enough that he only dismisses things that worry him or else he just doesn't comment, Davis told Helwani. He didn't comment on the PFL for four years because he wasn't worried. He's commented on the PFL a lot in the last six months. He's worried. What specifically worried him about Bellator is the metrics we put in the press release. 30% of that roster ranked in the top 25 per fight matrix rankings. All in all, it's the MMA landscape that just got hit with a tremulous shift, and we're all eagerly waiting to see how this heavyweight merger plays out in the ring. Day by day, it's about to get interesting. UFC 300 return teases spark MMA fans. Former UFC interim lightweight champ Dustin Poirier might be making a comeback, and guess where? None other than the historic UFC 300 event set to roll in April next year. After five years, Poirier pulled off a knockout win against Gaethje. They went head-to-head -head for the BMF gold. Spoiler alert. This time, Poirier found himself on the receiving end of a second-round knockout. Oopsie. Now fast forward to today and Poirier is dropping hints on X that a UFC 300 return might just be in the cards. Simply, it's looking like Poirier is gearing up for a comeback that's going to make UFC 300 one for the books. Working on something? Our 300, Poirier wrote on social media earlier today, teasing a return. Whereas Dustin Poirier is waiting for his potential fight partners for his big UFC 300 comeback. As of now, no names are officially in the ring, but Poirier did throw some shade at the idea of a trilogy with Justin Gaethje, mainly because Gaethje's got his eyes on Islam Makachev. Now here is the twist. Poirier's name is doing the rounds with none other than the notorious Conor McGregor, while McGregor is slated to throw down with Michael Chandler next year. No date set yet. The rumors buzzing with Poirier and McGregor's interest in a potential fourth face-off. See, these guys just can't get enough of each other for the UFC 300, and it might just be the stage for another epic chapter in the Poirier vs. McGregor saga. Fighters promoter, hints at major clash. Last but not least, Tyson Fury's promoter, Frank Warren, has been cooking up in the rumor mill. Now, after the last showdown between Fury and Francis, Warren's got this gut feeling that the Gypsy King and Francis might just lace up the gloves for a rematch. Now, Warren's indicating and mentions that a rematch is practically written in the stars after the epic clash between these two titans. It's like destiny is calling for another round of Fury versus Francis. I think there's a good chance of that happening. I do, Warren said. I don't know if it'll be next for Fury. It's like jumping too far forward. Let's get the big one, with Oleksandr Usyk on Feeboard 17. Out of the way first, and then we'll see where we go. But I do think it'll happen. Tyson told me that he wants the rematch, and I know Nganu wants it, because after the fight we were out there, we met at His Excellency, Turkey Alal Shikad's house, and we had quite a lengthy conversation. He's a nice guy, by the way. He's a nice guy, good team around him, and I'm quite sure we'll do it again. However, Tyson Fury might have his sights set on a rematch with Francis, but there's a little detour on the horizon. Before he can dive back into the ring with Francis, Fury's got some heavyweight business to attend to, and his next challenge goes by the name of Oleksandr Usyk. Additionally, Fury's got his eyes on the reigning WBA, Super, IBF, WBO, and IBO heavyweight world champion, and that's no small feat. So, before we can get the encore of Fury vs. Francis, we've got the showdown with Usyk on the boxing horizon. It's like the heavyweight division is serving up a buffet of epic clashes, and man, we're in for a treat. All right, guys, that's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. See you at the next one. Until then, goodbye.